If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. I want to talk to you about keys to boldness. A keys to boldness. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for your word. And God, I thank you for examples that uh, are set for us. And God, I pray, Lord, that we would just uh, model these things uh, that we see and we hear uh, in your word. And God, uh, you haven't changed. Uh, you're as strong today as you were back then. Uh, there are miracles today as they were back then. And uh, God, I pray that you would just help us uh, to be bold in all we are uh, as Christians. God, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for our WANA program and our youth program that are going on. Thank you for all those volunteers there. And God, just bless this Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 4, keys to boldness. Number one, they had no fear. They had no fear. Number two, they understood persecution. Uh, there was a lot of per persecution uh, back in uh, the first century and against the church. Uh, and I'm telling you, folks, it's coming. If the Lord tarries, we are going to go through persecution. In and number three, they prayed for boldness. They prayed for boldness. If you go back to, and we're not going to read it, uh, but what started all this that is happening in uh, you know, chapter 4 is Peter and John went up to the temple to pray. A man was begging there. And I don't know, I can, I can just remember the, the saying, uh, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And that miracle there uh, just caused a stir. Uh, this man had been lame from birth. Uh, this man had been laying there, and they knew who he was. And, uh, you know, a miracle had taken place. And the scribes and the Pharisees did not like that, the attention that it drew. And the other thing they were upset about is they were preaching in the name of Jesus. They would not even say Jesus' word, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, because they did not see him as the Messiah. And Peter, uh, I'm telling you, in chapter 4 early, uh, basically said, you know, he, he just said, listen, you guys are the one that crucified Christ. You are the ones that need to get right with God. And that just made uh, these scribes and Pharisees even more angry. Now, we want to start in uh, Acts 4, verse 14. And seeing the man had been healed standing with them, they could not say nothing against it. Because the man said, you know, he said, I, I'm just telling you, they asked by what power? And he says, I, I have no idea what went on. All I know is a guy told me to stand up in the name of Jesus, and I did it, and it happened. So the, the very person that was healed, this man, uh, was given personal testimony, and these scribes and Pharisees had seen him there, so they could not deny what ha happened. But when they had commanded them to go outside, out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do with these men? Isn't it neat that uh, Peter and John was causing a stir? Isn't it neat that there was a crowd gathering on street corners, and there was a crowd, crowd gathering, and it made the scribes and Pharisees extremely uncomfortable, and they were wondering, what can we do to these guys? And then verse six, the rest of 16, for indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident. And so they were admitting, you know, we can't deny this. This guy had been crippled and he is now walking, but we have to do something to shut them up and to stop uh, this movement. And it says, even to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it, but so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So what was the first thing they were going to do? They were going to threaten them. And notice the word there. It wasn't just a threat, okay? It, he, he just said severely threaten them. And they had no grounds on which to do and, and punish them for what they were doing. Uh, because if you think about it, you know, uh, why would you complain when a man got healed? 
when a man that had never walked is walking now. But yet, this is what was going on. Now look at verse 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak nor teach in the name of Jesus. And the word commanded is a strong word, folks. They were just saying, if you keep this up, there are going to be serious consequences to this. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. So Peter wasn't being rude. Peter wasn't saying, you know, he, he, he wasn't, you know, uh, going against that. He was simply saying, you've got to decide what you are going to do, and we will decide what we are going to do. And basically what Peter was saying, whatever you do, it's okay with us. All right, we're not going to quit speaking about Jesus. Verse 20, for we cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. Oh, folks, I am telling you, uh, Peter was the spokesperson for the disciples. Uh, Peter was fired up. I mean, the, the day of Pentecost had just happened. 3,000 souls got saved. There was a revival that, like no others, had seen in that day. And, and I'm telling you, you know, there's been large crusades where this many people have been saved. But in that time and in that place, it was, it was truly a miracle of God. And so Peter's basically saying, you know, you, you know we're not going to stop preaching. We're not going to te stop telling everybody how good God is. Verse 20, for we cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. One, they had not broken any laws. And that's true even today. If I choose to go down on Garrison Street and I choose to preach from a street corner, as long as I don't cause a disturbance, you know, they will leave me alone. And so he had not, Peter and them had not broken any law, but yet I am telling you, he stirred the pot. You know, the, the, the authorities, the scribes and the Pharisees were extremely ex upset at what they were doing. And then it says, the second part of that, they were glorifying God. And, you know, all I can say is that's envy and jealousy. Who, who would be upset? I mean, I really don't understand why someone would be upset with people getting right with God and people glorifying God. But yet, this was a problem to the scribes and Pharisees. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. So we're not talking about a kid. We're not talking about a teenager. We're not even talking about a young man. This guy was old enough to speak for himself, and this guy... Uh, testified that, that hey, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. All I know was I was healed. So 1 John 4, go with me to 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse 15. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And again, that's why we call it a profession of faith publicly professing that you have accepted Christ into your life. And that means uh, that you are one in God. That means the Holy Spirit is in you, and you know God, and you understand Jesus and what he did for you. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Three times in this chapter, it says God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. And folks, when you love someone, you will defend that person. When you love someone, you are not ashamed of that person. When someone loves you back, and that, that kononia love and that perfect love that God gives us. Uh, you know, you sense the love of God, and it just, you feel secure in those things. And it says, because as he is, so are we 
in this world. And folks, I'm just telling you, uh, uh, you know, Peter and John, uh, Peter and John had no fear. And the reason they had no fear was because of their love for God, and God's love had been perfected in them. Now here's the verse I wanted to get to. There is no fear in love. And what people don't understand is the difference between God's love and man's love. Man's love is totally different than God's love. Man's love, it's, it's a lot of times it's, I'll love you if you love me. I'll be nice to you if you'll be nice to me. But folks, God's love never changes. God will always love you. His people have gone astray and his people you know, have, have, have had to be disciplined and chastised. But God still loves them. And so we should not be afraid. We should not be afraid. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts us out fear. And the kind of love that God loves us with is perfect love. And folks, I'm just telling you, when you fall in love with God, when you fall in love with Jesus, I'm telling you, it is a special kind of love. And when you realize that God is watching over you and God's on your side and God loves you, you can get past things. And I tell you, fear is the number one tool Satan uses against Christians. Peter and John were threatened. You know, we're going to throw you in jail, or they said threaten them further. We're, you know, we're going to beat you, or, you know, there's no telling what he said. But Peter and John was so in love with God and Jesus that they said, listen, do what you got to do, okay? I'm not going to be afraid. I am not going to be afraid. And it says, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Folks, we all know fear comes from Satan. He wants, you to, he wants you to be afraid. And we live in a world now that it's easy to be afraid. Really, there's nowhere you go that you aren't threatened or, or there could be something that happens to you. But folks, we as Christians do not need to live in fear. God is with us. God protects us. And we have to understand we need to be strong. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love if we love him because he first loved us. And again, you know, we as men, I, I don't believe we have perfect love inside of us. Okay, we still have those human characteristics. We still have the old man that sometimes crops up in our lives. But they had no fear. It was obvious that Peter and John says, hey, you do whatever you want to me. Man, I love God. I love Jesus. I'm not worried about you. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep preaching about Jesus. I'm going to keep sharing about Jesus. And so they had no fear. The second thing, they understood persecution. They understood persecution. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So they went back to the group, okay? Uh, I don't know, it could have been in the upper room, but there was this group of people they went back to and shared what went on in their lives. So when they heard that, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. Why were they praising God? Because God was getting the attention. See, we we need to understand that when we stand up for God, He, you know, we're we're proud of Him. We're not ashamed that we're Christians. We are speaking on His behalf. And even a lost, you know, the lost scribes and Pharisees and the rulers, all right, they would not acknowledge God. But we were, but Peter and John was giving glory to God. Folks, don't ever be ashamed of being a Christian. Don't ever be, you know, shrink back uh, when you give your testimony. Don't ever let, and, and I've witnessed, folks, I'm telling you, uh, most of my life, and I, I've knocked on, I couldn't even tell you how many doors I've knocked on, and only two times has somebody 
slammed the door in my face. And do you know what? It didn't hurt a bit. (laughs) Okay? Not everybody's going to like what you say or what you do, but you are speaking for God. And when you start speaking for God, I am telling you, persecution is going to come. The world doesn't like you. Okay? It's so obvious. There's, there's, in our world, uh, there is a clean line. There is a, a positive line. There's a, a line between saved and lost. And they don't want us talking about God. They don't want us to read the Bible and them here read the Bible. But folks, you know, when persecution comes, we still need to stand strong. And it says, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of your servant David has said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things and the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against Christ. What is he saying? He is saying this has been going on forever, folks. You look at the Old Testament in Pharaoh. Moses comes in and says, let my people go. He said, I'm not letting you go. And there there was that battle and Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament. Then you got Herod and you got Pilate in the New Testament. All right. Uh, Saying, you know, uh, who is this Jesus? And, And, you know, these mock trials and these false witnesses against them. And folks, for truly, what it really says is that you know, if they, if they persecuted Jesus, they're going to persecute us eventually. If they persecuted the disciples, it's going to come up on us. And, and I, I kind of like uh, Paul and Silas. I mean, you talk about persecution. They were beat, beaten for the cause of Christ and thrown in jail. And the Word says that they were proud. They were, they were glad that they could you know, go through that for the cause of Christ. And we know what happened there. Uh, the jailer got saved. He, he, they talked them out of suicide. And then the whole town, I mean, the whole family got saved also. So folks, do not, do not be afraid of persecution. And right now, it's just verbal, okay? People will be ugly to you. And, and, and it is. It's, it's probably going to get down the road to where it's really going to cost us something. But don't be afraid of persecution. You are standing up for God. It's been going on for centuries, and it's not going to stop. If anything, it's going to get more intense. That's what uh, you know. Peter was saying, and, and they were saying here, verse 27, For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined determine beforehand. And they're just saying it's all part of God's plan. Folks, you think about it. Jesus came to die. All right, He knew where he was going. He, he knew that he was going back to heaven. He knew that his blood would pay for our sins. And nobody, I believe with all my heart, Nobody will suffer the persecution that our Lord and Savior suffered for us. So if he'll go to the cross and he'll do that for you, you know, what, what is someone saying something? Or even, you know, I know in third world countries you can lose your life uh, if they find a Bible in your home or that you preach the name of Jesus. But it happened to Jesus himself is what he is saying. Verse 29, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And they're simply saying, hey, don't let persecution stop you from teaching and preaching the word of God. Don't let persecution stop you from sharing your testimony with people around you. Don't let persecution uh, put fear in your life and threats in your life. Man, they did that to Jesus. And so, uh, you know, they're they're certainly, uh, before it's all said and done, going to do it to us. Uh, John chapter 15. 
Go with me back to John 15. John 15, verse 18. The Bible says, if the world hates you, you will know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus himself said this. He warned the disciples. He is warning us. Hey, they hated Jesus. They're, you know, they're not going to be nice to you. Okay? Verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I choose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Why? Because our values are not the same. Because we don't believe the same. Because, you know, uh, what they think is right or what they think is okay is not okay according to the Word of God. And any time you challenge that, folks, uh, you know, there's, there is going to be some persecution. Verse 20, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept uh, my word, they will keep yours also. So Jesus is just saying, man, it happened to me. Okay, don't worry about it. Count it as a compliment. I mean, seriously, if, if someone comes up to me and says, you're a Jesus freak, you know what I'd say? Thank you. I'm glad you noticed. All right? Man, I think it's a compliment to be called a Jesus freak. And so they're just simply saying, you know, it's coming. It happened to Jesus, and we need to not worry about it. But all these things they do uh, will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. It's the world. They don't know God. They don't care about God. They don't worship God. Okay? And so it's going to happen. And then the last uh, verse there, verse, or the last few verses there, it says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Oh, folks. I, I don't know. I just long, I long for a prayer meeting sometime to where uh, this would happen, to where there was such a movement of God, there was such a power of God, there was such a holy hush of God that literally, uh, you know, uh, you know, the ground or or it, you just have this this shaking, this this there's something going on here. Folks, and I'm telling you, and I believe with all my heart, that was one of the keys to boldness in the days that we are talking about here. All right? They weren't afraid. They weren't afraid of being persecuted. Prayer was a huge thing in their lives. And it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, I believe the shaking was the presence of God. It's like the flames of fire on the day of Pentecost. Uh, even in the Old Testament, it could be, you know, smoke. You know, smoke and fire uh, was, was a, a symbol of God's presence. And, and I, I'm just telling you, I, I remember when some of us youth ministers, uh, when I was in Lot, we went to uh, Glorietta one time, and we were at a youth conference there. And I don't know, we just had a great time in our worship time and we all went back to one of our rooms and there was about eight of us in there and uh you know we just said hey let's just have a prayer time and i am telling you and and i am not exaggerating at all when it was all said and done and and people prayed more than once god was so in that place and uh we had such a burden for our churches and we had a, such a burden for our youth uh, that prayer meeting, Tony, lasted about two hours. And it was just one of those things. And I, I'll be honest with you, folks. When, when, I, when I left that place, I was just like spent. I felt like I had worked or I felt like, you know, uh, just something, the, just the uh, intensity of it and the presence of God and all that was going on uh, was just amazing. And, and I'll never forget that night. I really won't. And so it was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God 
with boldness. Folks, we need to be bold. All right, time is it's gone. It's going. I truly believe it. We preach through the book of Revelation. I don't think we have a lot of time left. And it's not the time to be timid. It's the time to say, thus saith the Lord. It's the time to make sure that your family members know Christ. And you're, you're going to offend some people, okay? It doesn't matter what you do. You're going to offend some people. But folks, I'd rather offend somebody than have their blood on my hand. And so you can just see the power of prayer. We need Anytime we witness, we need to bathe that situation in prayer. We need to go prayed up and uh, ready to do business with God. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 18. Of course, we know this is after the whole armor of God. Man, he gives us each piece of Roman armor there and what each piece does. And then he wraps this up uh, in verse 18. Praying always. And the always praying, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says the same thing. Pray without ceasing. You can be in your car driving with your eyes open and praying. There's times, uh, you know, especially like this Saturday when we were out, you know, when we were fixing to go out visit. visit. Man, I, we bowed our heads, we prayed inside there, and then when I got to my truck, the one who went with me, we prayed also. Okay, any visit that we make, anything that we, need, that we do for the Lord, we need to start it with prayer. Praying always and with all prayer, supplication, in the Spirit. That's the key. If you are in the Spirit, it doesn't matter what people do. It doesn't matter what reaction was given, okay, you'll be fine because you have done what God has asked you to do. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance, it's not going to be easy, okay? Some people are going to complain, the scribes and the Pharisees, you can't do that, you can't use his name, you can't teach his name, all right? But we have to persevere, we have to understand, you know, the gospel is important, knowing where their soul is going is important with supplication for all the saints and for me so that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Folks, there's still millions of people in Fort Smith, thousands of people that don't know Jesus Christ. They don't know the gospel. No one has plainly shared the gospel with them. And I just, I just thank God that, you know, uh, the gospel is being put out uh, through our church. Uh, Chaffee Crossing, two got saved. Uh, two weeks ago at the mall, five got saved. Uh, last Friday, I went to visit someone, and uh, I was able to lead that uh, man to the Lord. God is just, you know, moving deeply in us, and we have to continue to share the gospel. Notice what he asked for, boldness. And folks, you need to pray for that. You need to tell God, God, help me to be bold in what I'm doing. Not arrogant, okay, not condescending, just bold in your witness and with people you share the gospel with. Verse 24, which I am an ambassador in change. All right, Paul's talking to the Ephesians church, and he just said, listen, uh, and I read a commentary one time that said when he was in chains and chained to Roman soldiers, that they would have to change soldiers out because soldiers would slip him some water. They would slip him some food because he had spoken to them and led them to the Lord, shared the gospel with them, and they got saved. Isn't that neat? That's making the best of all situations alive. Okay, he's in prison, and he's still sharing the gospel, and people are being saved. And we are ambassadors. We are representatives. We know what an ambassador does. Folks, we represent Jesus Christ. And notice how he ends it. That in it, 
I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Three times in this, pr- in this prayer and in this scripture, he says, God, give me boldness. Then Acts chapter 4. Go back to our text. Acts chapter 4. Verse 12. Look at verse 12. I love this scripture. This is, this is the thing that Peter said to those uh, as he was addressing the Sanhedrin. Nor is there in salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Folks, that's the, the, you know, that's the summation of the gospel right there. All right, you can't work your way to heaven. Buddha's not going to get you there. You can, just, you can just go over the list of all those. I'm telling you, it is Jesus Christ. He is the one who saved. And then I love verse 13, and we close with this. Now, when they saw the boldness, notice that word again, of Peter and John, and perceived they were uneducated and untrained men. Notice they kept asking them, you know, who are you? By what name are you speaking? Who gave you the authority to do what you're doing? Folks, I tell you who did. It was Jesus. He empowered them. He poured three years into their lives. He anointed them. And he told them, listen, go in my name and preach the gospel. Share the gospel. That's what the Great Commission is, is the gospel. They were uneducated, untrained men. They marveled. Who are these guys? What seminary have they been to? Is there one we hadn't seen? Can you share that information? Can we see your credentials? And folks, Peter and John were so bold and had the power of God on them that even the lost people marveled. They said, man, I don't know where you get your power. I, we don't know what is going on. But this is crazy, is what they were saying. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. I want to ask you a question as we close tonight. Can people tell you have been with Jesus? Can people tell that you are a Christian? Are you making a difference in people's lives? And when people ask you, well, why didn't you get mad? Or why do you go to church every Sunday? Why do you do these things? You would just simply stop and just say, hey, if you've got a minute, I, I would love to share with you why I do these things. Father, thank you for this night. And God, again, I, I believe that the Wednesday night crowd is really our most faithful folk. And God, I pray that you would just help us to understand the importance of boldness. God, time is of the essence right now. And God, I just, I just know in my own family, I do not want any of my family to die and spend an eternity in hell. And God, I pray that through my life and through my witness and through my testimony, that it would just shine. Uh, Lord, shine for you, not for me. Not to put a number up or a notch up. God, it's people under the sound of the gospel. They're not going to get saved if they don't hear the gospel. So God, I pray we'd have no fear in sharing with people. And God, I pray that we wouldn't have fear of persecution either. Lord, they persecuted you and they persecuted Jesus while he was here. And God, I pray that we would ask. The Bible tells us we have not because we ask not. And God, I pray that we would ask boldness. God, just thank you for this time that we have tonight. Thank you for Acts. Thank you for just the explosion, the explosion of salvations and people being saved and people being baptized. God, I pray that we would never take that for granted here. God, I thank you that even as we speak tonight, uh, there has been 50 people join our church since January the 1st. God, we give you the glory. And our baptismal waters have been moving. So God, help us never to be satisfied uh, where we're at. And God, I pray that we would share the gospel with people around us. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen.